All right, so now let's talk about muting. I already stated bar chords. Muting in bar chords is really easy because all you have to do is, is lift and relax. Make sure that there's no pressure on the strings, but yet you're making full contact with the strings. That's really important because a lot of people mute and they'll... Uh, and then you hear these open strings ringing. It doesn't have the, the sure. staccato effect. Right? All right, so anyway, now, but there is such thing as muting with cowboy chords, and the interesting, weird thing about this is, uh, you can't, there are two types of mutes. You could palm mute, you could use your palm. But, even that one, I wasn't completely doing a pure palm mute. All right, that, that can work in strums like... Uh, Using the, the palm not just as a mute but as a percussive sound. Neil Diamond. Okay. You still are sort of applying pressure though yes. on the left hand. Yeah, that's a as, big as, as, as almost as if it was a bar chord. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, what I do when I'm using cowboy chords, when I do cowboy chord mutes, the chances of getting a string ringing are pretty high. Yeah. So sometimes I combine palm muting plus the left hand muting. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the left hand muting now. Let's say I want to mute a G chord. All right. What I do is I completely collapse the chord, but notice I maintain the shape of the chord. Mm -hmm. So my fingers can jump back to it immediately. Mm -hmm. So you have to cover the entire set of strings. All right. And you get... Uh, all right, so and there's our Bo Diddley rhythm. All right, notice it's a complete and total mute, pure silence. Right now, but here's the weird thing. Well, that's a G chord shape, nice and easy. All right, let's try a C chord. Now we're getting a little harder. All right, not only do I have to collapse this, but I have to bring my thumb okay. over the E string because if I don't. You just have to choose not to hit that G, the E, low E. That's hard to do in the heat yeah. of strumming, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can't even do it like when I'm, right. You know. So, uh, instead of uh, this, instead of this, you can hear the E string ringing. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. Uh, let's take a look at E. Same deal. Right? But notice again, I maintain the shape. I make sure I make, I keep contact with the three strings mm -hmm. I'm going to need so when I come back off the mute I can just jump back up. Right. All right, now here's some... Um, is, is that... Uh, all right. Now, D chord. Whoa. Okay, how are you going to mute all these top strings, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. You really have to reach over with oh. the thumb. And even so, I mean, I have some ringing strings there, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, what there, there was another kind of uh, situation, what was it? Let's see... No, I guess that's about it, but the idea here is you collapse your fingers over the strings, touch very lightly, keep contact with the chord, where you have lower strings above these fingers, you have to bring the thumb over. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, you got to practice on every chord with this. Mm -hmm. You've got to practice every single chord shape. Sure. Whereas with bar chords, there's only one thing you need to do, and that's this. doesn't matter what right. the shape, right? Right. All right. So those are the, um, the uh, muting techniques, okay? Very important. Strumming, as far as expressive qualities, there are, there's so, there are just so many things you can do with a strum to make it expressive. Uh, there's a couple more things, like that muting does give it expression mm -hmm. because it gives it a staccato effect. Um, uh, what do I want to look at too? I want to look at the harp, what I call the harp strum. Uh, it's like a fast arpeggio, mm -hmm. all right? And it's, it's kind of dramatic, a little melodramatic at times. You can either do it that way or this way. So instead of going... I'm going to add some harp strum in there. This is a strum that's used for Sultans of Swing, Dire Straits. Now, so that's like... Down, down, up, 
the same exact strum figure, but what I'm doing for the second... Here, let me explain it this way. Let's look at these 16th notes, for example, for a second, right? Okay. As opposed to the 8th notes. If I just strum on a, on a beat, it's going to sound like one sound, one tone. But if I did ba -da -da -da, really quick, and then, believe it or not, these are not uh, 16th notes, by the way, I'm doing. They're like 32nd or 64th. Okay. But basically, you're, you're breaking, you're still trying to, there's this amount of time to do this strum. This, bing, right, has to take the same amount of time that does, okay, the, the harp strum. So let, let me demonstrate this way. Here the strings break up a little bit as opposed to this. This sounds like one big tone. This sounds like you're breaking it up. All right. Sure. You also get a different quality when you do the harp strum in reverse. Right. 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 You know that sort of. Often thing. among folkies, that's like a final. The yeah, final it could be thing, a final thing. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that could be used within the context of, a, of an ongoing strum. Sure. It can be done. And it sounds cool. Another thing is this Calypso-esque um, kind of like precursor to a beat. Instead of this, you get one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that you could find in, uh, this is why I always use Beatles, it's always an example. Uh, things we said today, right? Now, in that case, we are uh, we're mixing duple and quadruple in this particular right. case because we have to one and two and three and four and there's duple, but then you have you have to double up the speed at that point. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, also, there's one other thing I, uh, before I move on to other expressive techniques. There's one other thing I have to make clear, is that when you're tapping your foot on these beats, mm -hmm. it's easy to do this one, all right, the, the duple strum. And the reason why is when you tap your foot, your, your hand is going down at the same time. When your foot comes up, your hand comes up, mm -hmm. all right? So it's like there's a string tied to your toes, mm -hmm. right? You're pulling your, your, your foot up every time you strum. In this case, this is one reason it's very hard is because here you're going down up, this is on the down of the foot. Right. And here, when your foot is coming up, you're doing a down. Okay. So it's going against that grain. I, I remember I taught myself. I don't know if there's any way to get my my foot in, in this video, but let's try it. Uh, all right. So, uh, can, you think you could get this? I think so. All right. So, all right. So, uh, let's see. What were we attempting to explain? <laughs> All right, so we have the the foot tapping. All right, now can we get the hand and the foot in this? Uh, Is it hard? That that might be a little difficult. Maybe if I move back, I'll I'll keep the guitar low. Okay. Can we can we somehow do that? I think we can. All right, so I've got my my beat right now. If I do duple, are we good? Yep. Okay, if I do duple, if you watch my hand, it's like there's a string tied to my foot. Even when I have a specific strum pattern. The hand and the foot is like a rope tied to Right. It. But with quadruple, we get... Alright, so what you yeah. have to do is go for the downbeat of the foot, down, up, and for the upbeat of the foot, you go down, up. I literally right. taught myself how to do this very slowly. Oh, man. I would go down, up, 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 down. So finally it became a flow. Okay. One of the hardest things to do is syncopated 16th notes, keeping that foot going. The one thing I always teach is the acid test is the... Oh, diddly. Very hard to do. Ah. Okay. Okay. That's uh, one of those kinesthetic, you know, uh, it's like a physical tongue twister. Sure. You know. Sure. So. Other expressive techniques. This is dynamics. 
Okay. Again, we'll use uh, day in a life. Okay. All right. Now, the, what I always tell my students, beginners especially, I'll tell them hold hold the pick really, really loose, like you're almost going to drop it, and then strum the string. So it's like, right? Okay. Holding it so loose, I could almost drop it. Right. Then I tell them hold it so tight that it, you know, your, your muscles are really tense. Ah. Right? And I tell them that's how you control dynamics on ah. the guitar. Dynamics means loud or soft. Mm. Um, that's not really true. I mean, it's possible to hold it really tight and do a soft strum. Right. But it's psychological. When you, when you put that kind of tension in, the tendency is to really sure. strum hard. All right. So how are dynamics used? Dynamics can actually be very powerful. And this is one thing that bands, when you're in a band, they're always talking about. It's like, Wait a second, this tune has no dynamics. We've got to bring it yeah. down in this section. And yeah, and then they often forgets. don't do anything about it anyway. Right, right. <laughs> they always forget, you know. My, band, my uh, blues band has it down, though. We do it pretty well, I think. Uh, back in the days of Bach, they had something called terrace dynamics because they didn't really have control of uh, certain instruments, how loud they could go, like the harpsichord actually had one sound. Right. You know, you couldn't go louder or softer. Right. right. That's why the piano is called the piano forte, loud soft. You know? Oh. Uh, because you could get loud and soft from it. Brilliant invention. But uh, anyway, using dynamics, all right? So dynamics is meant to like almost, a, a dynamic coming up will bring a person almost to an emotional edge or a, an emotional something. There's this push, you know? So like uh, to demonstrate in uh, Day in a Life. <laughs> So that's done on the record with piano, but I'm replicating it on guitar. Right. You can feel that kind of, you know, when that comes up, there's sure. an emotional quality to it. So as I say, there's a, there's a limit to the amount of expressive techniques to do with the right hand. I mean, you know, uh, there was the harp strum, uh, muting, dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. And I think that would mostly cover it. But, Do but we have anything from Calypso, ska, reggae? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, ska, reg uh, well, reggae. Let's do ska first. Ska is like, um, like if you have a duple strum, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I mean, you have a pretty quick, you know, pretty brisk tempo. Like, all right, down, up, down, up. What you do is you miss. The downstroke always, okay. and you always hit the upstroke with okay. a mute after. So it's like mm -hmm. down, up, down. Up. So then we get down. Up. You know, ska is pretty, a little more brisk. Two um, and it's hitting on two and four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, actually, what it's hitting is the uh, the second half of the eighth note. Yeah. On each beat, so it's like one, two, three, four, and then the eighth notes are one and two and three and four. And right. So you're essentially playing the and. Right. And two, and there we go. And four, and, right? So um, reggae is like uh, there, there are two fields that I'm aware of. One is kind of like like as in stirred up, which is a one, four, five. If you look at the other lessons, you'll find the secret. What? So this is, because it's a slow tempo now, we're getting quadruple strumming. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And what we're doing is we're accenting where, where like, all right, in ska what we're doing is this. We're, we're eliminating this and just doing this. So it's one and two and three and four and mm -hmm. one and. In reggae what we're doing is we're, we're on the same exact beat, but we're doing down up. On here, we're eliminating mm -hmm. this and just doing this. So it's the same values, it's just doubled here. You know? Okay. So you get one dot a, a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So we what we pick up is the end up. Okay. One e and a two e end up. Then the other reggae rhythm I, I like is bass. We haven't talked about uh, time signature or uh, compound time signatures, but just. As a note, what I was just teaching about strumming and downstrokes and upstrokes and duple and quadruple can be applied to two, three, four, four-time 
It doesn't matter the time signature. If there's uh, eighth notes or sixteenth notes involved, you can do that kind of strumming for any time signature. Okay. All right. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because now, then, uh, uh, let me see, we have in, uh, uh, I'm trying to think now. You know, that's the Stevie Wonder, and uh, the man is looking pretty. So now we have one. And by the way, the reggae drumming, it's called uh, drop two. It's, it, what it does is it, it takes the bass drum and the snare drum and sits on the two and the four of the beat, never playing the one and the three, and there's all this fancy work on the hi-hat while that's oh, going on. Okay. So it's like one, uh, one, two, uh, like, like a beat. Uh, And that's the bass drum and the snare doing that one, okay. two, three, four, right? So anyway, what we have here is a triplet rhythm. So we have a 12-8 figure at a time in a sense. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. There's 12 beats in that, right? Right. So we get... Uh, uh, So it's still on the same value uh, of the latter part of the two sixteenth notes, mm -hmm. but um, in this case it's not, it's, it's got swing in it. Right. Okay, and that's another thing we didn't discuss is swing. Okay. So actually we did need more time than this to... We to will take up swing next time. We'll take up swing next All time. All right. End okay. of the second lesson. Okay. Bye-bye.